Hello, Mr. Mailer here, online math teacher, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be continuing my video series on sampling, and in particular, we're going to look at stratified random sampling today. So if you find this video helpful, consider smashing that like button, subscribing, and let's go. So, stratified random sampling, what is it? It starts out with, what is the concept of a strata? Within populations, we likely have different subgroups that share similar characteristics. A strata is exactly that, a subset of the population that shares a characteristic of interest. So you would choose your strata based on a characteristic that you think is going to impact whatever your survey sample or whatever you're doing is. It could be sex, socioeconomic class, location, anything. So what you do once you have your strata is is you just take simple random samples from within each of these stratas and take that to be your sample. So this way you guarantee you're going to have a little bit of people with each of those characteristic differences that you think might be important within your sample. So that's the general idea. So there's some advantages and disadvantages to this sampling method. The advantages are it's going to be a a better unbiased estimator than a simple random sample because you are going to not have to worry about coverage those important characteristics you created your strata based upon you're guaranteeing that they will be represented within your sample with this method so it can be better than simple random sampling you have less variability from sample to sample again because of that type of stuff i just mentioned and if your strata already exists it's not going to cost you that much money and it's going to save you time in a lot of cases. So these are some of our advantages. There's always disadvantages though. So if they didn't already exist, you'll have to make the strat yourself and then it actually is more time consuming and time is money. So depending on what you're trying to do, it may not be worth the time and effort. If you want to start calculating a lot more things like standard deviation, do confidence intervals, some more complicated statistical analysis based on your sampling data, well, all your formulas are a lot more complicated than if you had just done a simple random sample. So you'll need to be careful. And you need to know a list of everybody in the population to be able to do this because you're going to have to sort them into these strata and be able to list them within each strata. So that can be annoying. So let's look at how we could use a random number generator to conduct a stratified random sample. So if we are going to do it with a random number generator, first step with any method actually is just pick what your strata are. So you need to make sure you tell in your step one of instructions, what are your strata going to be? So how do we separate it? Step two, and this is where we kind of think about what we're going to do within each strata. Well, this is where we're just conducting a simple random sample. So you need to label all your individuals within your strata from one to N, where N is the size of that subset of the population within your strata. And this there, this number can be different from strata to strata. Strata do not have to be the same size and in practical application, they very rarely are. We'll see an example like that later in this video. Once you've labeled, use your random number generator and select however many integers you want to, or however many people you want to be within your sample, select that many integers between one and that population size number, ignore and repeats because we don't want to have the same person get represented twice. Now, just like your, your, your size of each strata will vary, your sample size will also likely vary. A lot of the time you will make the sampling that you take from each strata proportional to the strata size within the entire population. So that way different groups are still represented proportionally well. So that will vary. But those are also reasons why you need to have that sampling frame. You need a list of everyone to figure out that type of stuff. Once you've generated your random numbers, just take the individuals from within that strata associated those numbers and that will be your sample from within that strata. And then you just need to repeat those steps from strata to strata and you have your simple your sample when you combine them. So this is the general layout. It's a little more complex to explain than if you're doing just a simple random sample, but it's not too bad. So let's look at an example. So what we're gonna do is we have 
a company that wants to pull its employees about a new policy. The company has 100 workers who are either minimum wage workers or management. Of the employees, 10 are management and 90 are minimum wage, and we want to take a stratified random sample of 20 employees. Well, this is a case where there's natural strata already. The minimum wage employees and your management employees are likely to have different opinions on this policy. It might impact them differently. So those would be the natural strata you would want to pick here. So once you've done that, you can target in and look at each strata individually. So let's start with the management. So management, there's only 10 people in it. So we'll give each individual within that strata a label from one to 10. Once we've done that, since proportionally these management employees make up one tenth of the entire population and we want a sample of size 20, one tenth of 20 is two. So we're going to select two people from the management group. So we're going to use a random number generator to select two integers between one and 10, ignoring repeats. And we are going to sample those two management employees corresponding to the numbers we just pulled. So that way, we have gotten our sample from within the management strata and it is proportional to how big the management population is within the whole company. So then you would need to do this for our minimum wage employees. So we're basically repeating steps two through four, except our, min our minimum wage employees are larger. So we are going to label them one through 90 because there's 90 of them. And we are going to select now 18 random managers between one and 90, ignoring repeats because we can't have the same person twice. And that way we've, we've then sample those employees whose numbers were selected and our sample is now complete. We'll have 20 people, two for management, 18 for minimum wage, and we are good. Now, simple, now random number generator is not the only way you can do this. And this should say a stratified random sample up here, sorry could also do this with a random digit table. So if you want, you can pause my video and see this basic general idea for instructions here. You could also do it with names and a hat as well. So if you want, you can pause the video and look at this. Now, I don't want to do one more example and it will be with this names and a hat method here. So say we work for ETS, so educational testing services, and we need to sample colleges from a list. What we might do is break down our colleges based on college type. Maybe we classify them as small public, small private, all those types of different classifications. Those could be our strata. So we could divide them all into those similar groups. Then for each strata, we would write the college names on equal size slips of paper and put that strata in a hat. So we put them all in the hat, mix it up well. So this is just for one strata. And then we are going to select however many slips of paper we want our sample size to be from within that strata without replacement. So if I'm looking at small private colleges, I can't select colleges like Amherst College twice in my sample. It would only be able to show up once. So step five, sample the colleges your names were in the slips of paper you pulled, and then repeat this for all your stratum. And again, your sample size may be different for each stratum. And, but we combine each of those simple random samples to get our entire sample from the population. So that is it.